stand against Harrison Pullman. <laughs> and Village Chiefs is who he went to, which is kind of like getting the mayor of Vincennes to sign away Indianapolis. Sounds kind of stupid, doesn't it? That's the kind of shenanigans that were going on around here. Uh, village chiefs had no jurisdiction over large chunks of land. They had jurisdiction over their, over their villages. So, you know, um, and that's part of the reason Tecumseh came down here to speak with Harrison. That's part of the reason that it eventually led to what we're sort of celebrating today, the muster on the Wabash. What this event is about today is the mustering of the troops to march north on Prophetstown, uh, which, uh, which eventually be became the Battle of Tippecanoe in November of 1811. Um, and since we are native people and we are sort of speaking for the native side of all that, you're going to hear an awful lot in, in the course of the rest of this year about the Battle of Tippecanoe. You're not going to hear the Indian side of it. <laughs> um, first of all, it was an illegal act to march on that village in the first place. According to the Ordinance of 1787, uh, they needed an act of Congress, which he did not have. Uh, also, a lot of historians tend to talk about the fact that Harrison um, just went up there to talk to the prophet. Uh, nobody marches a thousand guys well armed into your backyard to talk. Uh, in fact, if you read Harrison's own letters, he mentions in them, and he, and he was writing letters sometimes a couple of weeks to the War Department leading up to the battle. Uh, and there would be two or three sentences about, yeah, you know, maybe we'll, we'll settle this in peaceful ways. And then he would go on for two or three pages about the battle that's to come. So was it a letter about peace or a letter about war? Uh, he even mentions the fact that he would provoke the Indians into a fight, which is exactly what he did. Um, he mustered his troops down here, he marched north, but when he actually approached Prophetstown, he marched right up to the edge of the town within a quarter of a mile in full battle formation. Talk about freaking Indians out. And, and even in their own eyewitness accounts, they said they were all running around the village like they didn't know what to do. Well, they're like, there's a thousand guys with guns out there. You know, they really didn't expect Harrison to show up at the village like that. And, uh, and so then they send a chief out. It wasn't the prophet. Prophets, the prophet sent a guy out to talk to Harrison. And, and that guy went out and talked to him, and they agreed that they would meet the next morning uh, to discuss terms. Um, and then the, the guy went back to the village. Well, then Harrison proceeded to surround the village on all sides except the Wabash Riverside, still in full, full battle formation, still with every gun ready and every sword and saber out. And <laughs> They were looking for a campsite. That was his excuse. <laughs> the same chief ended up coming back out. He's like, what are you doing? And, and Harrison's like, we're looking for a campsite. He's like, just go over there by that river. So he pointed to a creek and told Harrison to go over there. And that's where they camped. That's where the battle site was. In fact, he pointed out the most easily defensible spot for miles anywhere around. So I don't think the Indians were planning on attacking him at that point. Why would they send him in the worst place you know, for them to attack, you know, but that's where they sent it.